morning on this second Sunday after Christmas, uh, we'll begin our service with hymn 109 verses 1 through 3. 109 verses 1 through 3.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, on to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets.
dignity of human nature. Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity by his son, Jesus Christ, and liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus said the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save O Lord your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with constellations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock, and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank Thank you. You. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the open sweat. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from white mountains, and the God of God will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Be the Lord a friend of God, and look upon the face of our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was to the Lord, and to the Father of God, for all of us. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, 
with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After the wise men had run, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to seek for the child to destroy him. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. And Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee, there he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Amen. Amen. When I started out in my ministry, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to study at St. George's College in Jerusalem. And the course I studied there was called the Palestine of Jesus. Now, Greg, who was the dean there at the time, thought it was very important for us as we were starting out on our journey going towards Bethlehem to first stop at Herodian, which would have been one of the palaces of King Herod the Great. Now, when I say palace, it was more of a palace away from the palace, sort of a cabin in the desert, if you will. And this particular palace, Herodium, was a very good distance between Jerusalem and Bethlehem, just about halfway. It's far enough from the road that you can be protected if anyone's coming for you, but you can also see anyone who's coming before they have a chance to get you. The other thing is that, aside from being well-placed strategically, is that Herodium had a lot to offer, particularly in the ways of entertainment. There was a pool, a literal pool, in the midst of this hill that the palace is on. And there is also a theater there. 
And when I say theater, I don't mean a home theater like what many of us have in our homes today, but I mean a actual theater for people to perform and do plays in. So this was a pretty spectacular place that Herod built up for himself. Now, if you go to the Herodium today, you'll still see the hill that it was on, and you'll see the semblance of what it might have looked like, but it is a ruin. And there's archaeologists there now with their brushes and other tools going around in the dirt and seeing if there's anything in particular they can find there. In Bethlehem, on the other hand, if you go to the Church of the Nativity, this church is where the cave that Jesus was born in is, is placed. But it doesn't look like a cave anymore. You go into this place, and everywhere around you, everything is encrusted in precious metals and gems. And while I was there, there weren't the archaeologists around, but there were scaffolding. The scaffolding was there to help preserve the place, to help preserve its beauty for worshipers there for years and years to come. So while the palace of Herod has fallen into ruin, the cave where Jesus was born, has been raised up. And it was as we were reflecting on this difference, as we were talking about it, that Greg, our leader and guide for this trip, said something that stuck with me. He told us that the power of God isn't found in the palace, but instead in the village. That's a lesson that we see both the wise men and Joseph learning today in our gospel. We see the wise men at the very end of their journey today as they get ready to go home. You know, the wise men had traveled from far away because they saw the star, the star marking Jesus's coming into the world. And so they, as wise men, thought, perhaps logically, that the place to go to find out more information about this star, to find more information about Jesus who was coming into this world, was the palace. Now, after their journey in talking with Herod, they go and they actually see the baby Jesus. They see him in this village. They see him in humble circumstances. And it's on making that connection with the baby Jesus that they deepen their relationship with God. So much so that they have a vision, a vision telling them not to go back to Herod, but to go back to their countries by another road. If they had any doubts that the power of God wasn't to be found in the palace, they had no more doubts now. This vision clearly told them what they had learned already, that the power of God is found in the village, not in the palace. Joseph, too, learns this lesson because we see in our gospel today that he's told in his own dream, in his own vision of the danger that Herod presents. It's why he flees with Mary and the baby Jesus to Egypt. 
And even when the danger has passed, even when Herod the Great has died, Joseph is still a little weary of the royals. And in fact, a vision confirms this. And so they travel up to Nazareth, far away from any of the royal family to make their home. The wise men and Joseph both learned from their visions and their dreams that the power of God isn't to be found with the royalty. It isn't to be found with the rulers. It isn't to be found in the powers of this world. But instead, it's found in the village. Paul puts this in slightly different words in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, when he says that the power of God is made perfect in weakness. We are called like the wise men and like Joseph, to recognize that the power of God isn't found in worldly power. It isn't found in the ways of the world at all. It's found in the village. It's found in this small, seemingly insignificant child. It's found in the backwaters of the Roman empire. <clears throat> to us, where we find the power of God might seem at first to be weakness. Yet that power of God, the power that God has to offer to us, that power might seem like weakness to us at first, but it is a power, the only power, that will last. And now please stand as you are able. And let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father of God, Maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Christ, the only God and Son of God. He died for sorrow before all worlds, and I have God, life to life, very God. He died and not me, being of one substance with the power, I do all things great, who for us men and for us all age. Amen. And it was in our company that it was the Virgin Mary, and it was made man, and was a crucified also for us. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose in, for he was the scriptures, and ascended in heart, and stood on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in the glory, and dry up the world to get again, whose name was so happy. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the Father, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is the Lord, who saved out of the Father. I 
Let us make our intercessions to Almighty God. In peace, we pray to thee, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and works. For, our our and and for, us. Us. for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who are for justice and for the just and proper use of thy creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friends, and need. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, for Trey, our priest, and for all bishops, including Francis, Bishop of Rome, and Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and other ministers. For all who serve God and His church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those on our monthly prayer list, and especially today for Joan, Ken, Jerry, Michelle, Becky, Barbara, Marianne, Paul. Alicia, Casper, Miranda, Harriet, Joanne, Lee, Claudia, Barbara, Becca, Joan, Jennifer, Lucas, Logan, Dawn, Brittany, Sharon, Anna, Laura, Barbara, Tyson, David. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish. St. Mark AME Zion Church, Newtown, and St. Paul Levittown. We pray for our elected officials, Joe, our president, Tom, our governor, Charles, our mayor, and all of our local officials. Hear us, Lord. Lord hear us. We thank thee, O oh Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the faithful witness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron, and of all thy saints. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays. Robin Connell, Irma Davies, Laura Blandle, Christine Smith, and Rebecca Warren. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating anniversaries. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving in the military. Lord, look graciously on thy church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministry. We will exalt thee, O God, our King. And praise thy name forever We pray for all who have died, especially departed loved ones and Christian martyrs throughout the world, that they may have a place in thy eternal kingdom. Lord, let thy loving kindness be upon them. We Lord Jesus Christ, in this time of change, help those who travel, help those who are sick, help our loved ones who are in need, help them to feel your presence in their lives always, and return them safely home and safely to their home. We ask all this in thy most holy name. <coughs> And now taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. <laughs> Almighty God, Father of Jesus Christ, may your God Sweet, 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 sweet
We are our sin and our heart is sorry to meet our mistakes. Remember to send us reads on the books. The word of the is in our Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us in the merciful God. For thy son, our Lord, Christ, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever wear to serve the peace in Jesus Christ. We are our Lord. We give you to pray for our Lord. Amen. Mighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now please stand as you are able to. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please show one another a sign of peace. And peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated as well. <laughs> While we don't have a lot of announcements, I would ask that you do uh, look at those announcements in the back of your bulletin uh, when you do get a chance. Uh, and those who are with us online, uh, if you're signed up for our emails, you should get the bulletin with all of those announcements in it. And if you don't, uh, please uh, get in contact with us and we'll put you on our email list. Uh, there's always things on here like our faith facts, which covers the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, we also this week have our epiphany service coming on Thursday. That will be at noon. Uh, you are warmly invited to attend if you can in person. And if you can't for any reason, uh, please know we will stream it live uh, and there will be a recording of it later. So. You can participate that in any way that works for you. I know in this time of change and uncertainty, there's been a lot of anxiety, and particularly anxiety with the Omicron variant for COVID. Please know our diocese is continuing to monitor the situation, uh, and their advice to us has been to mask, to continue to mask. Uh, with a particular recommendation for KN95 or just the 95 mask. Uh, but just continue to do that. If you can get a booster, if you're eligible for that, uh, the recommendation from our diocese too, as well as for me, is please go out and get that as soon as you can. Because uh, we do want to make sure everyone not only stays healthy and safe, but feels healthy and safe. Uh, and another way that you can help us with that too is with our sign-in in the back of the church. Uh, so please, if you haven't gotten an opportunity to sign in for the service already, please make sure you do that before you leave. Also back there, we have our offering basin. So if you've got an offering you wish to give, please place it in the back there. Um, and if you're with us online, please know you can always send your offerings into us uh, through the mail as well. Now, as we continue our service with Holy Communion, let us offer up our prayers of praise and thanksgiving in our hearts up to God.
conservative note to two users, usually it's the A, please stand if you are able. of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become thy children. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name Evermore praising thee and singing. us unto thee, who art the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and there made an offering of himself in obedience to thy will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was betrayed unto suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks unto thee, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for men for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it for the remembrance. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his blessed death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascent. We offer unto thee these gifts. Sanctify them, we beseech thee, by thy Holy Spirit, that they may be to thy people the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. The holy food and drink of you and unending life. 
Do thou likewise sanctify us, thy servants, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve thee in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. Luke, and all thy saints into the joy of thine eternal kingdom. All this we ask to thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee. And now, as your Savior Christ is taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the but deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover once for all, a sacrifice for us. Therefore, The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Lord, I have to but speak the word of God, and my soul shall be healed.
service now continues with the poet's communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank you that thou would feed us to be holy. Peace, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby that thou be the Lord of God, and thou be the Lord of God, in the midst of the body of thy son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and that are also heirs to the hope of our And we humbly beseech thee, O 
To the Lord bless you and keep you. To the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. To the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.